Section 2.2, Factoring, Part 2. In the Section 2.2, Factoring, Part 1 video, we worked on finding the greatest common factor. And then once we found it, we were able to factor it out. So that is always your step one. Step two is if you can't factor a greatest common factor, then you want to ask yourself, do I have two terms, three terms, or four terms? In this case, we're going to focus on the four terms. So the goal of, of factoring by grouping is to group the terms in a way that the grouping will allow you to factor out the greatest common factor. So here, we have four terms, so we can check uh, to make sure that we don't have a greatest common factor. So we have 8, 4, and 1. So we're going to use by factoring by grouping. So I'm going to group this as group 1, and I'm going to make this over here group 2. So I'm going to call this group 1 and group 2. So we take each one individual. We have the 8 minus 4x. So we look at 8 and 4. And the factors are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And for 4 is 1, 2, and 4. So the greatest common factor for 8 and 4 is going to be 4. There isn't any x's in here. So my GCF is going to be 4. And then for this is for group 1. Okay, so we take our polynomial, and we're going to factor out a 4 from this group 1. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and so we end up with uh, 4 parentheses 2 minus x squared. So one of the, the tricks for grouping is going to be that whatever you have in this parentheses should be what we have on the second parentheses. So we can start by writing what we already have. We have a 2 minus x squared. And so if we look at x cubed y minus 2xy, let's go ahead and look at what the GCF is for that. So they both have x's in common. So that means we're going to use 1x, and they have a y in common. So we're going to use xy as our GCF. So I'm going to place xy in here. And so if we look for, if we have us to multiply xy times 2, then I get a 2xy. However, in our polynomial, the 2xy should be negative. So I'm going to go ahead and write, make this a negative. So your choice is it going to be negative or positive. And then I always like to check our, our work. So negative xy times 2 is negative 2xy. And negative xy times a negative x squared is a positive x cubed y. So that works here. So now if you ask yourself, what does this term and this term have in common, we can see that they have in common a 2 minus x squared. So that's going to become your new GCF. So I'm going to write 2 minus x squared on the outside. And let me just write equal signs here. And so if I remove the 2 minus x squared out to the front here, if I factor it out, then I'm going to be left with a 4. So I'm going to write down a 4. And the same for this. If I factor out a 2 minus x squared, then we're left with a minus xy. Okay, so this is going to be our factored uh, form. So this whole polynomial is equal to 2 minus x squared times 4 minus xy. And you can check your work. 2 times 4 is positive 8. 2 times negative xy is negative 2xy, which is here. And negative x squared times 4 is negative 4x squared. And negative x squared times xy is negative, is positive x cubed y. Okay, let's try another example. So again, we can group these two terms and these two terms. So the first one, we have an x cubed and an x squared. So the GCF for group 1 is going to be x squared. 
So we can factor out an x squared for group one. So if we divide x cubed by x squared, then we're left with an x. And x squared divided by x squared, or 2x squared divided by x squared is going to be 2. And then the shortcut here, um, which you always want to make sure that it does work, because sometimes it might not work, depending on the order of your um, terms here. So um, since I have an x plus 2, the idea is that I'm hoping that I end up with an x plus 2 here. So in group 2, we have a 9 and an 18. So we look at the factors for 9 and 18. We can see that that 9 is going to be your greatest common factor. So I'm going to write 9 out here. And now I need to decide if I should use a positive or a plus sign or a minus sign. If I multiply 9 times x, I get a positive 9x. However, I need it to be a negative 9x. So I'm going to write down a negative here. So negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Negative, times, negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. And so that works. So now we can see that x plus 2 is what they have in common. So I'm going to factor that out to the front. And if I do this, then x plus 2 is going to come out to the front, leaving me with an x squared. x plus 2 will come out to the front, leaving me with an x minus 9. So you always want to ask yourself, are my parentheses um, factored? So x plus 2 is already factored. However, x squared minus 9 still needs to be factored. Um, we have not learned um, how to do that yet, but I'm going to go ahead and factor it. And later in this video, we'll come back to showing you how to factor something that looks like x squared minus 9. So this would be our final answer here. Let's try another one. OK, so let's look at this group here and this group here. So 2n cubed minus 6n, the greatest common factor for the 2 and the 6 is going to be a 2. And the greatest common factor for n cubed and n is going to be n. So if we divide, we have 2n cubed divided by 2n is going to give us an n. And 6n divided by 2n will give us a minus 3. So 2n times n is 2n cubed. Let me go ahead and put here squared, right? So 2n cubed, we should have 2n times n squared is 2n cubed. And 2n times 3 is going to be negative 6n. So we're hoping that in here, we end up with the same n squared minus 3. So we have 5 and 15. The greatest common factor is 5. 5 times n squared is 5n squared. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. We need the 5n squared to be positive, so I'm going to use a positive sign here. Now we can factor what's in the parentheses out. So I'm going to write it here, n squared minus 3. If I factor it out, then I'm left with the 2n and the 5. So this would be our factored um, polynomial.